Here is a tool that you can use to remove it. Be very gentle with this, okay? You can only use this knife for this, for this top section. You cannot use the knife or the blade for the other seals. Don't even try it. It's not a good idea. You're going to damage them. So this seal here can be removed with a pair of tweezers. And that's what we're actually going to be using for this entire process. Tweezers. That's it. So you remove the other um, seal and you're back at the bearing. Now, as you can see here, I already removed the bearing before, but this bearing will be fully inserted in there. Okay, so go to a vise or some holder that will hold the top by the threads, but be careful not to pinch the threads. Okay, put some protector or a piece of cloth on it before you clamp it down. You don't have to clamp it down too hard because you're only holding it. And the next step is you take a hot air uh, workstation, which is what I used, or um, a torch, blowtorch, and go around the side until the bearing falls out. Now, don't apply the heat directly to the cup, the flame, because you're going to tarnish it. Okay? Don't do that. Pay attention also here. Some slight damage here on the cups because of the tool. So this was uh, a little bit stuck, so there's some slight damage. They can still be used. They're not too bad, just to let you know. So with heat, remove the bearing until it falls off. You can help it as it's coming along by going to the top and pushing it out if you wish. Just make sure heat is only applied to the cup. Okay? So once the bearing is out, so take your tweezer, remove the seal. Now, there's two seals, a back seal and a front seal. Make sure that the back seal is in the back. Some people put in the bearing the wrong way and they put this in the front. Then you can't add grease or fix grease issues after. Make sure it faces the right way. So as you can see here, we punch in slowly around with the tweezer. Do not use a knife here. It's better to use a tweezer to do this. It's easier and it won't damage it. So once we get a section out, we can go around slowly and remove it. Okay, and as you can see, we're going to put that to the side for now. And here are the bearings. As you can see, we have to get rid of the uh, bearing balls. Now, in order to do that, we have to go to the back, get rid of that seal. So we're going to be doing the same procedure as we did in the front seal. Go around, take it, be very gentle with it, okay? Just make sure you get it good. Now, on the back, you'll see a plastic separator. This is what actually separates the balls on the races. Okay? So, to remove it, do not remove it from the back. That is not how you remove this. Don't, don't be silly. Don't do that. Okay? You're going to do it from the other side, flip the bearing around, and close the tool, close the tweezers, and slowly, very gently, just pinch between the balls, out. This will be where the bearing grease sits. And it'll come right out. Now, now that we have that off, it's time to remove the balls. So, move the balls to one side, the inner race falls out. And all the balls are here, and there's 15 on this bearing. 15 on the other one, and 15 on this one. So, we, on the other cup there, on the plastic cup, we have the new balls that are going to go into this bearing. Now, I'm only going to show you one bearing. Just This is a, a kind of a, a mock setup to show you how this can be done easily in your home with barely any tools. Okay? So, the next thing we got to do is clean the outside race and the inside race. They both have to be clean. Now, pay attention here. This is critical. If the races are cracked or they're pitted, the whole game is off. You're not going to be able to do this. So be, be careful to check that. If the races are clean, the outside race and the inside race is perfectly clean, you can reball this without no problems. You can do this up to four to five times, maybe even longer as long as there's no cracks or pits on the races. So we're about to reinstall the balls into the bearing. 
set the outer race vertical. And you're going to add in the balls into that race. You're going to put 14 balls. You're going to leave one ball behind. And that's the last ball that needs to be put in. The reason why we only put 14 is because if you put 15 balls, you can't get the inner race in there without damaging the other balls. And um, I got in trouble here because I'm using the wrong tweezer because it's magnetized. So I grabbed, uh, let's grab one of the non-magnetized ones here. Tweezer to install. All right, we'll go ahead and put the balls in there. I'm going to go ahead and dump this out right here so they're right accessible. So we go up to 14 and we stop. And remember, no, we can't put 15 because then you'll damage the, the balls trying to get the inner race in there. Okay, and so far so good. The critical part is now. In order to put that ball in, we have to create a pocket so that it goes in and pushes the other balls up the race. Just like this. I'm going to show you here what I mean by that. Just like that. That's the intention we're trying to do. Trying to get squeeze the ball in there so it does that. While keeping the inner race in there already so that it, they don't fall off. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how this is done now. We take the inner race here. Oops, dropped it there again. And we push it at an angle. Okay, make sure it's at an angle that it can go in. So you should have 14 balls held in place. Now comes the critical part, the last ball. This has to be put in by hand. It cannot. You can put it on top of the other balls with the uh, tweezers, but it has to be actually squeezed in by hand. It cannot be. You can't use tweezers on here. You won't have the tactile feel to do this properly. So as you can see, hold it there and keep your thumb at the top race, making sure it doesn't uh, fall out, make sure it's straight. And I'm going to grab the tweezer just to put the ball in there so it doesn't fall on the floor while you're doing this. Okay, putting pressure, making sure that they're being stuck. And now you just leave it on top. Just right there, in between two. You take your thumb and you're going to wiggle it, not push. You're going to wiggle it slowly until you see the other ball start to rise on the sides. That is your sign that the ball is being squeezed in properly. And wh what I'm doing with the other fingers on the back, I'm holding the other balls from falling off. And you've seen that the ball has moved up, and now we have 15 balls in there. Once this is done, you're almost done this procedure. The only step that's left is we need to hold that inner race properly in there. So start moving balls up to the sides, into the corners. As you can see, I moved a couple of them up here. Moved some in there like that. And now the bearing is okay. It's ready to go, and it's ready to be finished. Now, as you can see, it's not going to fall off now, so now we can finalize the bearing. So we're going to install the retainer, the separator for the balls. Now, uh, easy to do this. All you have to do is just give it two, uh, two or three balls with spaces that can accommodate uh, at least three sections. And you're going from one side all the way around, pushing them slowly into their pockets. Now, you notice that the big hole on this is for the ball. The little hole, the top hole, the crown, is for the actual bearing grease. So as you can see here, hold two of them and start moving them into the pockets. Not complicated. This is a very easy step to do. Uh, the balls are not going to fall off anymore because they're stuck in the races, but they can still be moved around. So as you go around, they fall right into their pocket. Okay, we're good so far. And just to let you know again, reiterating what I just said before, it takes time, patience to do this. But all together, if you look at the time of the video, it shouldn't take too long to do this, okay? It just takes more patience. You might fail the first time putting the last ball into the race, um, but try again. You know, go slow with it. The first time I did this, I had to do it three times, uh, three or four, four times actually, I think, that uh, the ball kept slipping out in the, on the back one. So eventually I got my fingers to line up properly on the back and found a, a good way of doing this. Okay, so we got the balls all in. Now what we're going to do is go around and circle the circle pattern and, and push in the plastic uh, separator 
so that the balls all line up into the pockets. And now we're all good. Spin this around, make sure it spins properly. It's not dragging, we're good. Now we need to put the back uh, seal. And this is why it's critical when you're removing the seals to not use a knife or a sharp blade because you're gonna damage them. Okay, we're good so far here. So we got the seal in there, it's moving good. Now we go for the front seal. All right, here's a more, more close-up shot of the what they look like. Now the crown portions in between the balls is the place where you're actually going to be putting the uh, grease, whatever it was. And here's the um, grease. It's MG Chemicals White Lithium Grease. It's non-gun grease. It's premium and won't harden. And I'm going to show you here an up-close view of where the actual grease goes. So here's a close-up view of the actual divider, okay, of the, the ball separator. And it goes on top of the crown. That's where you put the grease. Not on top of the ball. Don't do that. You put it on top of the crown there because that crown area will push the grease over to the ball just on the the actual edge of it and that's what you want I have seen a lot of people put in grease all over the balls don't do that because it's just gonna gunk up everything so if you were to add your grease after that add in your seal move the bearing to make sure it moves properly at this point we stop we're not gonna continue we're actually going to put this in the freezer and the reason why is very simple. Um, in order to put this back into the cup, we can't use heat. Okay, we have to use the freezer. So you put your bearing in the freezer for about two hours. And I'm going to show you here as the, the bearing sits on top of the, the cup. It won't go in right now because it's not frozen. Okay, when you freeze the, the bearing, it contracts a bit. And it's, it just contracts enough to go into the pocket of the cup without pushing it in. You do not want to push it in. And when you're doing this, when you're getting the bearing back from the freezer back into the cup, make sure you add some grease on the outside of the race of the cup. So I use lithium grease. Make sure you add make sure you have grease there. Okay? So and also another thing, and I'm gonna take it out so I can show you, make sure that the bearing goes in the right way. And I just open it here just to make sure one more time that I'm facing it the right way. Make sure that the balls sit towards you as you're installing it on the bike. This way you can remove the seal, repack some grease if it's missing, without removing the entire bearing again. So again, that's the procedure. Freeze it, put it in, drop it. Make sure that it goes in by itself. Don't push it in. Make sure there's some grease on the outside. And then wait for about an hour or so until it's room temperature to put the thread the cups back into the bike. Make sure you grease the threads, obviously, properly before you put it back in. Okay, and that completes the process for the uh, Shimano Holotech 2 uh, bearing, installation and removal, and rebearing. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's really not much to else to add. And just, uh, I hope that, you know, that you take time in doing this properly the first time and this is the final installation of putting it back here. Thanks for watching.